This is Noah Vauder from DIYDSP.com. Today we're going to be continuing our series in restoring this instrument. This is the Cardinal Electric Eel. It's a guitar-like instrument that's played like this, and it's got a synthesizer in it, and the synthesizer is powered by a generator. So in our last couple episodes, we we're looking at this set of electronics here. This is the synthesizer, and this is the power supply. And we found that one of the chips was burnt out, and we were able to uh, repair that live on YouTube. And we we're actually able to make sounds come out of it. So one of the next steps would be to hook up the keyboard here. One of the problems though is that since the instrument was put into storage, I've completely lost track of where the keyboard goes. I've looked through all my things and I haven't been able to find it. So I just spent a, an hour or two in Eagle, the circuit board uh, design program, and I designed this. This is a four key keyboard. And these are the keys that I'm going to put into it. These are your standard Cherry MX switches. And I believe the ones I like to use are the red because they don't have any click. You want as smooth a motion as possible. And you want a nice linear path. So I believe those are the Cherry MX reds. And this is just, uh, if you don't know how keyboards are made these days, these are the key caps. So, uh, the electric, the original keyboard on this instrument had eight keys. And the electric eel keyboard lets you do finger combos, so that four fingers gives you a full octave. This was done because the instrument moves around quite a bit when you play it, so I felt a regular piano keyboard would be a little bit hard to, uh, hard to finger. So we'll see how that works out. In the meantime, we have this keyboard here, and it's really easy to learn. It's based on the first finger being C, and then the next one being E, and then the next one being G, and the last being B. So that's every other note. We go C, skip D, E, skip F, G, skip A, B. So how do you get to those in-between notes? Well, you press both keys together. So it goes C, and then to get D, you're going to press both, then E, F, and G and then A, and then B. So that means you can play an octave, you can play a scale very quickly, C, D, E, F, G, just by waving your fingers like that, and you can go backwards just as quickly. So we'll get into the chromatics later, there are a couple more combinations. But for now, this keyboard, I'm gonna, I actually ordered three of these, and I'm gonna give it a three octave uh, range. Reason I'm giving it a three octave range is in the last couple years where I've been playing a lot of electric eel songs, I've found that two octaves just barely covers. Just barely covers. You could play an awful lot of music with two octaves, but just by the skin of your teeth and sometimes um, there's a whole song, for example, Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. That's one I'd really like to be able to play, but it's two octaves plus it goes down to a B, uh, just below the low C. So you might say I'm adding the third keyboard just so I can uh, play Have a Holly Jolly Christmas, and you'd pretty much be right. So that, that's the bulk of it. I ordered the thing last night. It's going to come in in about a week. And then uh, if you're subscribed, then, and if you're notified too, click that notify bell then you're going to get a live notification when I go to solder this together in case you want to see the thrill of soldering things together see how things are actually made um, and then one final thing is I just wanted to tell a little story about how these things uh, were designed so this was designed almost 10 years ago and if you look around these days uh, there's a lot of people who are making computer keyboards out of, out of keycaps and cherry switches. For example, if you go on the subreddit uh, r slash mechanical keyboards, you will find a, a dedicated scene of obsessed mechanical keyboard fanatics. Now most of them like the really loud clicking keyboard, uh, which is a little bit different from what I use in my instruments because you don't want to have all that keyboard noise. But 10 years ago, these things, it was a little less common and it wasn't exactly well known how to do this. 
So I actually made those keyboards from some from individual keys that I bought at an auction. So a long time ago at MIT, there was a, a very famous underground guy by the name of Frostbite. And I never met Frostbite myself, but I did stumble on his artworks many times uh, at random surprise places. From what I know, Frostbite was a, very much an individual and he was very into making LEDs and uh, had another really a couple of very exciting technical hobbies so I saw a bunch of his LED light sculptures again this is nowadays you just buy you know your APA 102 lights and use an Arduino library and everything's taken care of but he did everything by hand he even made some four channel uh, LED light sculptures and I believe he actually worked at a company something kinetics that that really made serious uh serious business displays for for billboards and stuff and uh unfortunately he passed away too early and uh he left behind an incredible amount of electronics of all types and so what his friends did they got together and they had an auction and mm -hmm. i was able to buy a box, a big box this big, and it probably had about 500 individual switches in it. And those are the ones I used to make all of the uh, original electric eels. This cardinal eel had one, um, my red one, also that I, that I play a lot in the Christmas videos, was made with those switches. All the workshops I did, everyone who, who joined, took a workshop and built a keyboard was with those and a few more instruments as well. But uh, eventually I ran out of those. So uh, that's why it's now time to um, switch to the Cherry MX switches. And it's kind of funny because at the time I was making those, uh, those keyboards, they were suspended in air by a hunk of wood and then I hand soldered all the wires. There was actually no circuit board for them. And that worked okay temporarily, but as I began to travel with the Red Eel, back and forth to California, to Colorado, back and forth to Europe, I found that almost every single trip I took, there would be at least one uh, defect that I'd have to fix when I got back. And part of that was because the wires were all dangling in the air. They weren't soldered into the circuit board. So uh, I learned from that experience, and that's why this time we're going to have a circuit board in there. And that should uh, really seriously increase the quality of these. Um, there, I have some other news about keyboards too that we'll get into. I built an instrument with an actual piano chromatic keyboard, um, but th that's all for for now. So just hang tight, and I'm gonna um, is, I'm waiting for those those parts in the circuit board to arrive. And as soon as they do, then I'm gonna make another video. In the meantime, watch out for the video I'm editing now on my visit to the Musical Instrument Museum in Belgium. Uh, in Brussels, Belgium. That was very exciting. I've included a lot of pictures and some stories about the trip as well as, uh, well, yeah, j just, just watch out th for that video. I just got a, a couple more hours of editing to go. And then you can learn a lot about instrument design by looking at these brilliant creative designs from the past. All right, thanks. Don't forget, like, subscribe, add the notify. Let's keep this series going. Bye-bye.